pound for pound, hardest hitting dudes, pro, amateur, or sparring was Tank Davis and Zab Judah. Wow. It's crazy. They both southpaws. <laughs> wow. And I heard it from him personally. Yep, I've, been in, I've been in there with heavyweights, and heavyweights can't compare to how these guys hit. Been there with Sean Porter, uh, uh, a lot of people, man. And mm. um, definitely them two stood out as far as they power. AB got power too. Don't get don't make a mistake, but Tank and uh Zab was just a little different. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's that it's that hey look, man, you gotta be watch out because that nigga knock you out in the spawn. Like facts. <laughs> like it's one of those type, you gotta bring your A game. And, and, and it, it won't be to the point where though he even trying to hurt you and knock you out. He just got that type of freakish power where though he can accidentally knock you out. Mm. Facts. And like I said, I have proof. On different occasions, been in there, in there, and my brother say the same thing. But Lamar Peterson, two-time world champion. Every yep. time a tank, a tank situation come up, far as what y'all think about tank? Like, look here, man. We known that boy since he was a baby, man. I you gonna have to kill him? Wow, boxer Anthony Peterson says Javante Davis's power is real, is absolutely real, and he compared it to all the top names that he's been in there with crazy what up fight world it's your boy ego and i'm back with some more boxing let's get the formalities out of the way shout out to the rise podcast surprisingly i haven't seen anybody really talking about this but this was a great interview the rise podcast did and the link is in the description so make sure you guys give them a follow subscribe to their movement they had Anthony Peterson, brother of Lamont Peterson, of course, DC boys. And you heard the clip at the beginning. He was giving a very high praise to Javante Davis. He also said in the interview that, you know, he believes that Javante would beat Devin Haney. And he said he sparred with Devin Haney and he sparred with Tank Davis. And he said he's watched and I'm just paraphrasing. You guys can go subscribe and watch the whole interview so you hear everything verbatim but anthony peterson also said he's watched you know the ascension of tank davis he's seen him he said he was like you know had some dusty clothes or dirty clothes or you know just whatever kick it clothes all the way to what he's doing now and he said he couldn't be any more proud but i want to talk about the power like everybody knows obviously tank davis for the power but this is high praise. I mean, this is a guy who's saying, I've been in there with Sean Porter. Sean Porter's a welterweight who actually fought in the amateurs at 165. And Tank Davis did fight Sean Porter. And then, you know, that was in the buildup to the Terrence Crawford fight. And then for the first time, Terrence Crawford stops, stops Sean Porter. You know, I'm not saying there's a direct correlation there, but it's just something to note. That's how it played out. And Anthony Peterson... He listed some of the, the brilliant names in the boxing world because him and his brother, they've been in boxing. He fought Brandon Rios, you know, so he listed the extensive rap sheet that he's been in there. He said he sparred Jared Hurd. You know, Jared Hurd's a big dude. And for him, you could say whatever you want, but according to his testimonial, he's saying Tank and Zab Judah, their power was what stood out and you know it's not surprising now i want to speak about zab real quick because i think people in boxing tend to forget or don't know because there's a lot of people who are like you know the young fans they don't go back and do the the homework on some of the the past greats they don't take the time to like study the craft and study the people that came before them so they only know you know some people's failures towards the end of their career or maybe don't even know the fighters at all. But Zab Judah was a problem. You know, people don't give Zab Judah enough credit. And the crazy thing is, I watched interviews, several interviews with Zab, and Zab was basically saying that, you know, at certain points of his career, he was partying and staying up late. And, you know, because he was, you got to understand, Zab Judah at the time, he was synonymous with hip hop culture. And that could be very, very potentially damaging because it takes a lot of restraint it takes a lot of discipline and it takes a lot of willpower to resist the temptations because you guys got to understand zab judah just like tank is right now 
And um, you've seen other people like Deontay Wilder, where they become so synonymous with the hip hop culture, like Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather, certain guys just have that that it factor. And what do I mean in the hip hop culture? Like people will reference them in battle rap bars or on an album because they're lit and they're, you know, I, I can't even tell you how many hip hop lines from the time quoted something or said something about Zab Judah from Jay-Z, who's a billionaire now, to Fabulous, and pretty much just about everybody else that was popping in hip hop. They use some form of metaphor or simile about Zab Judah. So people sleep on Zab Judah. So this is very heavy praise. I know some people just look at Zab's career and looked at some of the losses and the, so some of the guys he lost to. And they tried to let that overshadow. But Zab was a real problem. He gave Floyd Mayweather a very, very tough fight. He beat Mickey Ward, right? Zab Judah is, is a monster. So Tank's in good company because... I'm going to go on record and say, in my opinion, Zab Judah is one of the probably the top five all time of since boxing, you know, was created probably top five, top eight most athletically gifted people that boxing has ever seen. Like, and that list is like, that's that's saying something, you know, and if you don't know, then you don't know. But that's what I really, truly feel. Roy Jones Jr., Zab Judah, they had an insane amount of athleticism. And I know I seen Roy, he said he doesn't like when people say that. That's not to knock and say he didn't work for, you know, his craft and things like that. I'm not saying it in that in that regard to either guy. I definitely think they worked on it and they, you know, they've been boxing their whole life and things like that and perfected their craft. But definitely great, great company to be in. But you guys heard it. Lamont Peterson's brother. He's saying that Javante Davis's power is real. For me, this is not surprising at all because I've heard the same stories, some on the record, some in videos that you guys have seen on my channel. If you follow me, if not, SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. Some conversations I've had off record about some of your favorite fighters, including Javante Tank Davis. And all roads lead to this stuff being true. I've heard about Tank busting people's jaws and noses and, you know, guys have to he like running out of sparring partners and Tank fighting guys who are like heavyweights, all types of stuff like that. And every if everybody's saying the same thing, then it got to be true. Like because you could be like, oh, Anthony Peterson, he's he's from D.C. area. He's from the DMV. So and he's on the Rise podcast, which is Calvin Ford, Tank's trainer. So maybe he's just throwing him an alley-oop and saying good things about Tank. But then his brother's saying the same thing, Lamont, who fought great fighters like Amir Khan and Errol Spence Jr., right? So that's two people. And then you look through the list, it's like you've seen the Ivan Redcash sparring with Tank. You've, you've heard the war stories. ES News got a bunch of them where people are t were talking about Tank. Uh, Luis Cuba Adias, who basically campaigned at like 54, 60, and he's a bigger dude. And he says, Tank, you'll feel his power no matter what weight, what the weight class is. So this is not really surprising to me. I've heard similar stuff from Tank. And it's just some people are possessed with that. I mean, only look at his record. Only two guys have survived 12 rounds with him. And then one of them, he had an injured hand. That was the Eastside Pitbull Cruise fight. And it looked like as soon as Tank started warming up, he got a hand injury. So, you know, who knows how that how that would have played out had he not injured his hand it is what it is tank showed he can box and had to lean in on some of those other wrinkles and shades of what he can do the other guy is like some guy earlier in his career probably like a six rounder or so so you know it's not like he went 10 12 rounds so realistically you only have one fighter that went 12 rounds with tank davis 12 because it you know if you're fighting a six if you're fighting a four six eight rounder when you just turn pro that's less rounds to get it done in. You know, it's almost like female boxing where they have two rounds and, you know, they might have 10 rounds and then it's only two minute rounds. That's less time for you to try to put it together and get the people out of there. So I'm, I'm like I always said about Tank, he's, he's a giant. He's colossal. I too have watched Tank's journey and been along for the ride. So I'm just glad people are seeing it and speaking on it. 
and you know best of luck to him you know you see people hating like the zone reporters they're hating and saying tanks resume this and that but ask the fighters the fighters are telling you what tank is and what he's made of but his power is truly the real deal and i think there's many many examples of this let me know how i did in this video slc subscribe like and comment for all your boxing news and i'm out introducing super thanks right here on the official boxing ego youtube super thanks allows you the viewers to show a little bit of extra gratitude which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing underneath all the videos you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it you can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks a brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself but other people on the youtube platform super thanks a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description, customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.